to have you aboard. Welcome to our third edition of uh, Razor Sharks Weekly as we tape here uh, each week. We're down here right on the corner of Easton Alexander of Murphy's Law. I'm John DeTilio, joined by a, a man who's just meant for television. <laughs> he just meant, he just says, you know what? I should be on TV. That's why we are doing the Lawrence Morton Show here on, on Razor Sharks Weekly. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, JT. How you doing? I'm doing well. But I, I always give you the big intro, too. The all-time leading scorer at Syracuse, the all-time leading scorer in the Big East Conference, and a second round draft pick of the Vancouver Grizzlies back in 1995. Okay, so yes. you're three and one on the season, fresh off a six point win over Lake Michigan. Yes. All right, first, let's go back to last Saturday's win. Your thoughts, as you've had now a few days to think about it. Um, overall, I thought um, we, we played a, a solid game. You know, I definitely feel that we have the potential to play better, you know, but uh, I'm always one to take some positives and some negatives out of the uh, situation. The negatives that I think that we're taking out of that is we have to learn how to finish games. Uh, situations where we were up uh, 18 points and uh, I talked to my players and I, I instilled in them to understand that you have to be able to finish this game to be successful. And, uh, you know, let's give Lake Michigan a lot of credit. They, they hung in there. Uh, they fought all the way to the end. But it's always good to come out with a win like we did. And, and that was a good reason. Up big, though, it's, it's almost natural to be taking your foot off the ball, right? When you're up that big and you're rolling and things are coming easy, as yeah. they were for you guys Saturday? Yeah, it happens. It happens. It's the nature of the game. But at the same time, you have to understand that uh, in order to be a good team and, and to be a successful team, you really have to learn how to put teams away and finish them. You know, I really felt my guys are working hard. You know, um, they're doing things that I've asked them to do. We're running good sets. But we have to figure out how to play for 48 minutes. Once we figure that out, and hit our free throws, we'll be fine. Some big time contributors. In it's no question about it. And that's one thing I can say, JT. Um, I really feel like out of the 15 guys we have, yeah. any guy that I put in, you know, that'll be playing, at, at the, which, which will be the five at the time, I feel that it'll do their job. And we have a bunch of scores on this team. Um, I tell my guys all the time, I'm the type of coach that, you know, if you're open, I want you to shoot the ball. And, and I want you to play your game and do what you do best. That's very important to me. You know, and doing what you do best and understanding that in order to be successful, everybody has to play their role. In terms of, and, and four games in, buying into that, just buying into it, to what you're saying, how much time do you think? I mean, go back to your days in yeah. terms of buying into what, yeah. whatever coach you had. Yeah. How long does it take for it, everybody to get on that same page? It, it, takes, it takes some time, you know, and I can honestly say one thing that I can truly say I really love about my, my players and my team is that you know we've been only playing with each other for four games. This is their fourth time playing with each other under the structure, under the whistle, you know, learning what uh, their teammate likes, what's his favorite spot. So uh, it's coming, it's coming. And like I tell them, you know, we, I'm trying to make it a habit. What's wrong with making a habit of winning? You know, people, people need to understand that. Like you, that. Can, you can make it a habit of winning, and that's going to be our goal. Either a habit of winning or losning. I that's prefer right. habit of winning, correct? I prefer winning also. I mean, look at the Patriots. Look at Chicago Bulls. You know, we can go to every sport. You know, the great teams make it a habit on winning. Because you always hear the word culture. You know, they got a culture of this, culture of that. That's how it started. You, habits. I mean, yes. you look at it, the habit of winning. And, and this organization does have a culture of winning a lot of basketball exactly, games. Exactly, exactly. You know, of course, we know what the Razor Sharks have done in the past. We know how successful they, they've been. But, you know, like I tell my teammates all the time and even the organization, we always talk. This is a new breed. This is a new structure and this yep. is a new era for the Razor Sharks organization. And uh, one of the things we won't change is uh, not being a winner. You know, all of us players here and even coaching staff, even up on the higher uh, organization, Ryan and Chris, we're born winners. And the name of the game is to win. And you know and I know if you yeah. win, everybody looks good. You like that? By the way, your voice sounds good. Because you don't yell during games, do you? Lawrence? I try yeah. not to yell. You know, I, I try to keep it easy, you know. But I'm stern and I let people know how I feel. And you don't have to yell to, to get your point across. You know you want to sometimes, right? Uh, I, you want to. I you gotta know, yell. I your, yell at my daughter all the time. Hey, it's in, it's in the blood. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fire type of guy, you know, who, who loves to win and loves to be successful and who hates to lose. You know, I, I don't take losing well. So it's very important that uh, if we do what we have to do, like I know we will, learning each other each game, you know, and, and taking another step up the ladder, we'll be fine. Well, three and one on the season. Lawrence Moten and the Razor Sharks got things rolling here through uh, four games. Much more uh, to continue here from Murphy's Law on this week's edition of Razor Sharks Weekly on Time Winter Cable Sports. Uh, to be
be honest, I don't think I'm playing good. Wait a minute, you're averaging 21, you're doing something right. How, how, I, okay, why do you say you're not playing? All right, welcome back to Raise Your Sharks Weekly. I'm now joined by a guy who's on fire right now, averaging 20 points per game for the Sharks. His name is Terrence Whiters. Terrence, good to have you aboard, man. You're on fire. What's been clicking for you here through the first four games for you? Uh, to be honest, I don't think I'm playing good. Wait a minute, you're averaging 21. You're doing something right. How, how I, okay, why do you say you're not playing well? Uh, I just think last year was a year off for me. My timing is a little off. Um, just playing with new guys, like Coach said, just trying to find the right spots to get these guys the ball, because I'm the coach on the floor. So it's my job to make everybody happy. Um, I mean, of course, we win in games, but we haven't tapped into our potential as a team. That year off, where were you for last year? Uh, the year before that, I played, yeah. in, I played in Morocco and China. How was that experience for you? Uh, different. I would think. Yeah, it was different. It was, it was a good experience, though, for the most part. Just, it's always hard being away from your kids. I have kids, three little kids, and my, my girlfriend, so... But other than that, it was it was cool. Well, how about being here, part of having your family here and being part of the Razor Sharks family, being part of Lawrence, being part of this team. You guys are off to a good start, and, and you're one of the major contributors. I mean, it, it's always a blessing when you play for a guy like Lawrence Moten. I mean, I grew up watching him. Uh, actually, one uh, the point guard on one of them Syracuse teams was a guy from Baltimore that I looked up to, and uh, so I always got to see Coach Moten play. And just Baltimore, and me being from Baltimore and him being from D.C., I always seen him and admired him from afar. So it was great to play from somebody that, and I can pick his brain and do different stuff like that. And he always keep it real with me, so I love our situation. Another Baltimore guy, Carmelo. So you, you, Melo, yeah. you must, did you grow up playing with Melo then or played against Melo? Yeah, Melo, a great friend of mine. Um, we played all through, I mean, middle school. He went to a different high school. I went to the rival high school. He went to Towson Catholic. I went to St. Francis, but we posed him with the St. Francis together. And at the end, he wound up going to Towson Catholic. But um, that's, that's my guy. When you hear criticism of Carmelo, not a closer, not a team player, you know, a me type of guy, never win the big one. How do you, how do you defend Carmelo when you hear that? Uh, I know it's not true, and I know all the work that he put in. So it kind of frustrated me. Like, we was just arguing about that at the Y, about Carmelo and different, like, you know, Kevin Durant, Kevin Love, those guys. And, I mean, Carmelo Anthony, to me, he's the best player in the league. That's my, that's my guy. I seen him put in the work. I seen him come up from nothing to something. So, that's yeah, that's, he my favorite player. Durant's so. having a pretty good year, probably the MVP right now. And, he, and we haven't even mentioned LeBron yet. I mean, yeah, I mean, KD, that's, that's, a, that's one of my friends, too. I'm real close with Tony Durant and his other brother, Cliff. So, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a mellow guy. So I'm going to go with mellow regardless. <laughs> well, how about uh, your AAU team we were talking about? Maybe yeah. one of the best teams assembled. What was it, you? Well, who else on that team? Dwight Howard on your team? Dwight Howard. Dwight, uh, he broke his leg uh, during the beginning of the summer. So he didn't finish out the summer. But um, we had um, Amari Stoudemire, who I also oh. play uh, high school ball with, just regular high school ball, Mount Zion in, North, in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, we had uh, Darius Washington played at the University of Memphis. Oh, yeah. Travis Outlaw, uh, Josh Smith. Uh, it's a loaded, come on. We had a guy. Uh, Talent. Yeah, it was crazy. We had a guy named Sonny Abraham. He probably was our best player. And he didn't plan out, but he was the number three player in the country at the time with that, that, that O2 class. Tough getting your shots when you're playing with all those stars? No, it was fun. It was, <laughs> it, it was fun. I mean, I could just pass the ball and back up to half court and just watch like everybody else. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. And I mean, I got everybody involved. I, had, I got my points, I got, but I had a lot of assists with those yeah. guys and we won. So it wasn't really no big squawk about who gets shots and where everybody get their shots at. Well, you've been getting your shots. Okay, so what do you what do you want to see from yourself here as you go into your you know, game number five? You said you're not playing that well. What do you need to do here? Did you gotta gear up for your next game? I just think it's small stuff. Just getting, getting in the gym, going back in the gym like a, 
last week I went to the gym. I was going to the gym at 5 in the morning before we practice. So I got to keep doing that just to get my timing together. And um, I think we'll be fine. I think we got a talented group of guys. All of us like each other. So, I mean, I think we, we're going to win the championship. He's sure. a humble man. He's averaging almost 21 points a game, and he says he still needs to play better. Good stuff. That's Terrence Whiters <laughs> from the Rochester Razor Sharks. We're going to take a break. Lots more still ahead here on this edition of Razor Sharks Weekly on Time Winner Cable Sports. I'm Bill Pucko. Coming up next on Rochester Razor Sharks Weekly, it's Mookie Jones against Terrell Williams in a game of Shark. Coming up next. Welcome back to Rochester Razor Sharks Weekly. I'm Bill Pucko. We are, for the next few weeks, going to hold a shark tournament. You know the game of shark better as horse. Here are the rules. This is a one-on-one -on -one competition. You call your shot. You spell out the word shark once you've missed your shot. The winner, the one who doesn't spell out the word shark, advances. We have seeded eight Rochester Razor Sharks, and we're going to play them off. It's Mookie Jones against Terrell Williams in a game of shark. My uh, name is Mookie Jones from Syracuse University. I am the shooter of this team. I'm Terrell Williams. I'm from Rochester, New York. I'm going to win this horse thing for the town. Right here at the end with a, with a bang bang. <laughs> hey, throw, it. Throw, it, throw it off the glass, two hands. What do you say? Okay, okay. Bouncing house. Boogie said he could do that. Oh! That's a, that's, hey, you had it. You just trying to cock it yeah, back. Yeah, no. Come on, man. You had it. Come on, man. I'm doing my knees like that, man. College three, college three. There we go. Jump shooter. Boogie said, that's what I do. That's my specialty. Terrell said, make me a believer then. What's the letter? Boogie said, oh, oh. Follow through. I ain't when the camera come on, still hold that follow through. That's what I stress to my team. The wing, college three. Nice way to hold come it. Come on, boy. Yeah, pro, man. We pros now. Come on, man. We pros now. Way to hold come it. Come on, man. Hey, hey, I'm shooting, I'm shooting college three. He ain't playing college. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow through. Baby. I stress that. Very important. <laughs> hey! Hey! Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Good try, good try, good try. Hey, okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, hey, this is all new to me. What, well, I'm, coach, seeing, I got it, coach. what I'm seeing is all new to me right now. Hey. Come on, Terrell. What's that calling, man? Will the real Terrell please stand up? The real Terrell. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? I've never seen Mookie do this. This is all new to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is all new to me. I thought he was just a shooter. I guess not. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> hey, okay. Hi, hi. <laughs> Put up my high school dunks. Oh! Hey! Yeah! What you do? Yeah, Terrell said he done opened up a can of worms. Oh, that was real easy. 
When you got long arms and you're 6'6", six, six, you can make it look easy. And Terrell has made a slight comeback. Is it the shoes? He's about to do a crazy he dunk, too. He got his swag back. He's about to do a he crazy dunk. Rob Sign for Rochester. Hey! Man, he done started something. They done started something. They done started something. Tried to get me out of there with them. Oh! One more. And if there you have it, it and hey, there no, you no, have no, it, Terrell is representing his city, Rochester. Oh, oh almost. <laughs> and back to his specialty. Hey, foot on the line, foot on the line. I guess you and put down to his specialty. Specialty. <laughs> This is what we picked him to do. He's a born shooter. And now it looks like he might seal the deal. Yeah, I'll leave with that. I'll take that. Yeah! Game over. Ah! Mook. Great game, great game. Chance, baby. So Mookie Jones advances to the semifinal round where he'll play the winner of the Devon Porter Dwayne Bland match, which we will show you next week. Coming up, we go back to John Tatulio and Coach Moten as the Rochester Racer Sharks weekly continues. Hi, welcome back to Ranger Sharks Weekly, our final segment here with the head coach of the Sharks and Syracuse alum, Lawrence Moten. Okay, and then you're back at home the following weekend. Yes. You get Chicago at the big house. Yes, we get Chicago back home, and, and, and you know, I, I keep stressing this, JT. Very important that I stress, protect your home court. You know, no matter what. what it's all about. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm strong. I'm strong on protecting your home court. You're going to hear me say that every week. You know, when you're at home, it's very important to protect your home court. By the way, your alma mater protected their home court mm -hmm. against Pitt. Wasn't easy. Wasn't easy at all. But you got to protect all. your home court at the door, especially when you got 30 plus thousand. Yes, yes. You have to make the people go home happy. And that was a beautiful day for me as a whole. You know, we won, and then I got a chance to go back home and watch the Syracuse game win. And you know, I, I, I looked at what Coach Beheim said, and he made a lot of sense. You know, after the game, they had asked him some questions, and he said, "I just want you to know, this wasn't an ACC game. It was a Big East game." And it was definitely a Big East type of a, yep. uh, of a game, you know. Pittsburgh's always going to come to play us tough, you know. Um, they've ended our streak a lot in the past couple True. of years. So uh, it was good to get that little notch off our back. Now, you're a football guy. Your reaction to Richard Sherman from the uh, Seahawks, who yeah. uh, he talked a little trash, got yeah. in the face of Michael Crabtree. Yes. Did you have an issue of what he's told Aaron Andrews? And did you have a problem with him getting in the face of Michael Crabtree at the end of that game? I don't have a problem with it at all. You know, I, I'm one of the type of guys where, you know, sometimes you have to show your emotion. But not only if you show your emotion and back it up, it's a difference. He backs it up. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL right now. And uh, he made a tremendous play. You know, I mean, that was definitely uh, an athletic play and it was very smart. And he kept the ball alive and they got the victory. And he's one of the reasons why they're on top. You know, many people will think that he disrespected the game by getting in the face, by actually getting into the face of Crabtree. Not necessarily we told Aaron Andrew, but the, face, but the fact that he went and grabbed Michael Crabtree afterwards. Yeah, well, um, I can honestly say, JT, those are the people who really don't know the game, who have never played the game, because there's always going to be a lot of trash talking in all sports. You know, you look at hockey, four guys fighting at one time, you know, and it's okay in hockey. So, I mean, things happen. It's the nature of the game. It brings incitement to the game. You know, um, of course, you still want to watch, you know, what you say at times because some people are sensitive. But, you know, the nature of it is it makes the game exciting. And we got the number one, the number one defense against the number one offense in the Super Bowl. So what more could you ask? Were you a, did you ever chirp during games? Oh, I let my game do the talking, you know. Not at all, Vancouver? Uh, you didn't yeah, chirp I at talked all? a little bit, you know, only when it was talked to me. Somebody, you know, I was never one to actually go out and do the talking. But, you know, if you kind of gave me an elbow that I didn't like or you said something that I didn't like, that's when I would uh, 
turn into uh, poetry and let you have who it. Is the, who is the uh, notorious chirper okay, that you played against? Who talked the most trash to you? You wouldn't believe it. Michael Jordan. Come on. Michael Jordan is one of the biggest trash talkers you ever want to Give meet. Give me an like, example of what he would say. He um, scores on you, and then what's he say? Uh, prime example, my, my, my first year in the league, we were playing uh, Chicago. It was the year they won 72 games. Okay. With, uh, you know, Rodman. They had the Pippen. They had the whole, now, 72 games in an 82-game season is very tough to do. And I think it'll never be done again. They did that. But to make a long story short, we were up 14 points on the greatest team that night. And it just so happened that uh, one of our players was talking trash. Dirk Martin was his name. He went to the University of UCLA. Great player, solid oh, yeah. player. Anyway, he's talking trash and uh, telling Michael Jordan, you guys are going down in Vancouver country. <laughs> and uh, he's just chirping yeah. and chirping. And to make a long story short, we were up 14. Uh, with a minute left to go in the game, we're down four. Michael Jordan has scored 14 points in six minutes. And, and I actually Second saw it live. And I, and I couldn't believe it. You know, to actually play against one of my idols was definitely an honor. But to see it live now was a situation where, you know, it's the real thing. So he walked over to the bench and he looked at Derek and he, and he said, this is the same thing I did to you in the summertime. So all of you guys just sit there and watch. And he gave us what I call the big hand. And what the big hand is, he paused it. And we all were stuck. I can honestly say, JT, that was one point where I couldn't move. I was actually, I really couldn't move. And I remember calling my buddy back home and I said, Tricky, he's real. Yeah, and, and, and that was a true story. Jordan speaks, people listen. Definitely. Good stuff. I Definitely. love it. Definitely. Well, that does it for this edition of Razor Sharks Weekly. A reminder: next Monday, you can come on down if you are taping at the La Quinta Inn on Lyle Avenue. We'll tape at one o'clock, and then of course this show will air Friday at four o'clock on Time Winner Cable Sports. My partner Lawrence Moten. I'm John Dettilio. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Razor Sharks Weekly. Yeah, hey to pump them up. Pop it up, pop it up. Go! No. He better lift off. He better, he better lift off. It's time for takeoff. Yeah, I don't win though. I don't win though, but I'm gonna try.